Welcome to The Brian Buffini Show, where we explore the mindsets, motivation, and methodologies of success. Here's your coach, Brian Buffini. Well, the top of the morning to you. Great to be with you here today. What a great day it is. A great day to be alive, a great day to grow, be better, do better, feel better. And that's what I'm all about. I want to bring uh, a little slice of the good life to you today and share with you a few things to think about. Maybe a few things you've kind of thought about, but maybe uh, this will give you food for thought as you're on your walk or your jog or your drive to work or wherever you listen to this program. Appreciate your support. Appreciate you tuning in here every week. And certainly appreciate you folks who have shared this show with other people as it's grown exponentially over the past five years with no advertising or marketing, uh, so to speak. It just grows organically because folks like you know someone who might like and appreciate the message and uh, you've tuned in and uh, or some of you are watching me right now on YouTube. So we're just delighted to have you and uh, hope this will be worth your while. Um, we're going to talk today about the masks we wear. Now, uh, we know that we've been having to wear masks during COVID-19 and lots of discussions about that. Uh, but the masks we're going to talk about today are the invisible masks and um, the difference between our authentic self and our false self, if you will. And I want to talk to you about that. I want to champion you today to be our very authentic self um, and true to who you actually are. Um, we're going to cover three points as we always do. We're going to talk about behind the mask and what is behind the mask. We're going to talk about removing the mask and then we're going to ultimately talk about being yourself. Now a mask by definition is something that serves to conceal or disguise according to Mr. Webster. And uh, and we all do that to some degree, right? I mean, you, you don't go through life. I mean, somebody says, oh, I'm just blunt. You know, I'm just, I'm brutally honest. Well, you know, it's not always good to be brutally honest, you know? Uh, do, does, do these jeans make my butt look fat, honey? Uh, it's, yeah, no, it's not time to be brutally honest. And to be respectful and courteous in society. Uh, there's things we do and we're polite and, and uh, you know, maybe we don't always feel great. And someone says, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Yeah, good day, you know. And, and that's, there's, as a part of that, I actually respect as opposed to, uh, how are you doing? Well, and here comes the therapy session. No, I just wanted to say hello, really. So, uh, you know, there, there's a purpose for the mask. There's a purpose for the mask we wear. There's, there's a benefit to it. There's, uh, in, in comfortable society, you don't also want to be, uh, totally transparent with every single person you meet on every single issue and every conversation. But uh, there's a difference between being totally transparent about your feelings or your worries or your struggles and being your authentic self. And that's really what we're all about. Uh, another definition of this mask is to disguise one's true character or intentions. And then uh, another one from the Cambridge uh, Dictionary is appearance or behavior that hides the truth. And that's where we want to go. And as so many people are uh, just struggling, especially in the world we live in today, Conformity has been weaponized. You know, uh, it's interesting. Uh, obviously, one of the great things for me having six kids that that span like a ten-year uh, age span is I get to see what you know from the upper millennials all the way down to the Gen Zers. I get to see their friends and I'm hanging around and I'm having conversations. I'm glad to say our home has always been the place that has congregated kids for the past twenty plus years. And even today, now the girls and their buddies, uh, and and some of the boys too. You know, they their friends come and hang out at our house, and we have long discussions and fun times. But sometimes the heavier discussions too. And so, it's interesting to see the things that people are going through and what they're struggling with. And you know, I, I you know, when I see social media today, all the kids they all take their photographs a certain way. You know, they turn the camera, they know how to look, and we know that the social media, Instagram environment is kind of always your best life. It's always the, the great food you have. It's, it's the makeup 
artist does your makeup and you look fantastic uh, you you're you're pivoted a certain way you're standing by the pool it's it's always your best life everything everything's your best shape your best life your best mood and one of the dynamics of that that i'm seeing the consequence of that is i've never seen more young people struggle with anxiety and the numbers bear it out and um the, the psychology associations talking about the number of people who happen to get medicine for anxiety and the number of appearances for anxiety and and hey I have no problem with you going to see somebody and taking medicine that helps you and all that kind of good stuff whatever it takes but what we want to do today is help people at a foundational level to ultimately get to the source code and that's where we're going to get behind the mask and so the first problem with behind the mask is we tend not to be true to ourselves we try to conceal our vulnerability insecurities fears anger, sadness is pain. Uh, we want to protect ourselves. We also want to please others. I mean, and in pleasing others, we know there's a problem there. We know where we're going to go. We know that's not going to a healthy place. Now, the, the dynamic of the true self versus the false self, and if you're watching on YouTube, I have this beautiful mosaic mask, and I taught at this at our peak experience years ago in Hawaii, and I gave everybody this gift of this mask to wear on their... Uh, to have on their desk and this was from 2007 this mask my goodness time is flying but ultimately this dynamic of the true self versus the false self you know we have the need for security control and affection those are the three desires and those three desires can often be wounded and hurt we didn't get we feel insecure or we've had our security rattled maybe from childhood, maybe economically, uh, maybe physically. We, we, and then we're looking for security, that gets rattled and it causes pain. So what do we cover over the pain? The mask. Um, control, you know, everyone wants to be in control to some degree. And again, control is helpful. I, I want the pilots on my plane to be in control. The downside is when you get some control, sometimes it can become controlling. Uh, also, one of the great challenges in life is you find out as a human being on this planet in this life that you're not in control of everything in fact you're in control of very little I don't control the weather I don't control the government I don't control taxation I don't control my neighbor I don't control the market I don't control I control very little and so when you actually get down to it I can control my attitude my effort my energy and that's about all I can't control my wife I can't control my kids can't control anything and so that feeling of being out of control causes hurt, wounds. And when we feel that loss of control, the false self comes to work. The mask goes on. And then uh, affection and approval. We, we desire affection. We want to please people. We want to be acknowledged or appreciated, whatever it is. And that doesn't go the way we thought it was supposed to go, those hurts and wounds. And to cover all that up, we wear the mask. And the mask ultimately covers these things over. Uh, Agatha Christie, one of my favorite authors growing up as a kid, said the human face is, after all, nothing more nor less than a mask. Okay? Great writer with great insight. Uh, Elizabeth Streb said you have to get beyond the barrier uh, of self-protection before you can really fly. And that's what happens when we put the mask on. The goal is to protect so that something bad doesn't happen. The problem is it often stops something good from happening too. Uh, Paulo Coelho, uh, one of my favorite writers, wrote, when you say yes to others, make sure you aren't saying no to yourself. And, and you're going to hear this over and over today in one form or another. You know, to, to be your authentic, true self. And I'm talking about in your character. I'm talking about in your character, in who you are as a person. That's really what it's all about. To me, that's where success really lies. You know, so many people come to me because I've done well economically. And I tell them all the time, look, you know, the economics to me are a reflection of who I am more than uh, a reflection of the, the resources themselves. That's why I've often said, you know, if I got, if I lost all my money and was kidnapped in the middle of the night and dropped somewhere else, I'd have a pretty good chance to make another fortune because of who I've grown to be. Not who I was at birth and just ordained for greatness day one oh, just made for it no I've worked at it I continually work at it I, I'm, I'm going through some programs and working through some uh, some old school content and journals that I've had for years right now that's 
rekindling in me a real fire to kind of raise my game and up my my standards and you know reinvest in the focus on my character and my personal development and personal growth and so to get more and more true to who I am and who I desire to be you know so we're not true to ourselves the second thing that happens is when we're behind the mask is we deny our God-given abilities and whatever your faith tradition is I mean for me it's just very very simple and in many ways my philosophy is very simple I believe in a creator who created me and uh, that very dynamic of creativity is there and so I just happen to believe that I and everyone else I've ever met has been given gifts by God that's what I believe and that's borne itself out in 25 years of running the, a, a coaching company that's champion people and a lot of times all we've done is help people rediscover who they are rediscover their gifts shine off their gifts maybe they've been beat up maybe they had a, a business setback and maybe they're new to an industry and we've just championed them to use the gifts and abilities they have it's one of the dynamics we have in the our, our heritage profile, our real strengths, as we call it, uh, where for the last 25 years, we've analyzed people's natural gifts and abilities to champion them to be themselves and, uh, you know, find their gifts and to use their gifts. Again, Pablo Picasso, a man who was highly gifted, said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. Boy, do I love that quote. Mark Twain said, a man or a person cannot be comfortable without his own approval. So there's the affection and approval. How about yourself? And then Oprah Winfrey said, create the highest, grandest possible vision for your life because you become what you believe about yourself. So we have to ultimately challenge ourselves, go through that. What are the abilities you have? Now, for some people, it's sometimes, you know, a difficult thing. And that's why one of the reasons we developed this heritage profile to help people understand, here's the gifts you were born with. And now that I have those gifts, I'm going to use those gifts. I'm going to learn to leverage those gifts in the marketplace. If you take someone with gifts and hard work and, and they do it over an extended period of time, they're going to be successful. That's just all there is to it. They just are. The third thing I want to bring up in, in Behind the Mask is something that's a modern phenomenon. And just like I talked about a lot of young folks feeling uh, higher levels of anxiety than ever before, this is something that's really accelerating. And, and when I read this recent study from BYU, I really, this is what inspired me to do today's uh, message. And it's called imposter syndrome. So BYU did this study, an extensive study, thousands and thousands of people, and they that said that 70% of people suffer from imposter syndrome. And that's where a person feels unworthy, like they're faking it. Uh, you kind of forget who you really are. Even the most successful people experience this. I, I know I felt it myself. Albert Einstein. Now, there's a guy, if you think about it, Albert was this recognized genius, right? And when people think Einstein, they think ideas, light bulb, brilliance, one of the smartest guys who ever lived. And yet, here's a guy that had his own hang-ups, right? His school teachers didn't get him, and they labeled him developmentally disabled when he was in school. Uh, here was a guy who kind of had the crazy hairdo and the whole thing. Uh, here's here's uh, a quote he said about himself. He said, The exaggerated esteem with which my life's work is held makes me very ill at ease. I feel compelled to think of myself as an involuntary swindler. Now, I, I'm going to shed some light on this. Here's Albert Einstein. All these people just heaping these accolades on his work and his work. And I know what that's like. Because I've had that, not to the same degree as Albert Einstein, but I receive thousands of letters and emails and all that stuff every month. Brian, you're the bomb.com. You've changed my life. Here's what I'm going to say to you. I have pronounced gifts in a couple areas, one specifically being in the area of communication, the ability to take ideas, communicate them into practical steps so people can use them and be successful. And I've done 2,500 seminars all over the world in front of millions of people and had hundreds of thousands of clients and we've championed them. We have the success rate in our coaching factor, 10 times a person averages uh, in their earnings, you know, they go from 33 grand to 350 grand, all these great things and done it for decades. I, I wanna say this to you, on more than one occasion in my life, I have been backstage, thousands of people waiting on the other side of the curtain, which is like the mask. 
And they're playing my intro music, and I have been plagued with the thought, like, what in the hell are you doing here? You're struggling with this and this right now, and you're going to go up there on stage and tell people how to do this or how to be better or how to be more successful. And I want you to know it's been there, and it is there. It is there for me now. You know, I have this tremendous gift that I've worked on for 25 years. Uh, you know, it was, a, it was a talent that I've dedicated myself to. I, I've built people around me to support me. You know, you guys know David Lally is one of our producers and the voice of the Brian Buffini Show. David Lally and I have been working together on content for 20 years. David Lally is one of the most brilliant content developers you ever met in your life. David can take a presentation and help someone who doesn't have a clue how to speak or present and in short order, take their garbled message, put it in a wonderful format, and have them go from zero to hero in no time at all. Because we've built literally thousands of presentations over and over and over again. So you, when you, you have a talent, and then you work on it over and over again, you become extremely gifted. And then what happens is because your gift is in the marketplace, you become rewarded enormously for it. Well, guess what? I don't have this level of talent in every area of my life. I don't have this level of experience in every area of my life. So guess what? For people, and this happens especially for people in music, in, in acting or performance or anything in life where you have one area of your life, you're supremely gifted and talented and you've dedicated yourself. And then you have all these other areas where you're not as talented, not as gifted, and it doesn't come as easy. In fact, I'll tell you that almost everything else comes difficult to me. And so uh, you can end up feeling like you're an imposter. The truth of the matter is, is ultimately recognizing what your gifting is and that the gift is a gift to you. And it doesn't mean that everything else is a phony baloney in your life. It just means you have one area and it might be like, okay, I got this one bicep that's five times the size of every other muscle I have. And it's in the speaking and communication and teaching area. But then I have other areas that I have to work like the Dickens to make progress at all. And so they, they might have puny muscle on the other arm, you know, that kind of stuff. It might be the, it could be the family arm, it could be the financial arm, it could be the personal conflict and resolution arm, whatever it is. And so we all have this. Maya Angelou, one of my favorite authors says, I have written 11 books, but each time I think, uh-oh, they're going to find me out now. That's imposter syndrome. We all have it. Now, this is a person who all of a sudden, she's on Oprah Winfrey, and Oprah's going, this is the greatest writer, and she's imp impacted my life more than anybody else, and yada, yada. And I guarantee you, Maya's gone at times, I'm going to be interviewed by Oprah, and I'm, what does she see in me? But that's the gift. That's the gift. And so what happens is you have a gift in one area of your life, you don't have it in all areas of your life, and you feel like an imposter, okay? Mandy Hale said, an amazing thing happens when you stop seeking approval and validation. You find it. People are naturally drawn like magnets to those who know who they are and cannot be shaken. And that's really the key. Your gift is not who you are. It's just a part of who you are. And finding your identity in your work or being a mom or being a dad or being successful financially or being a health freak or whatever it is, you can't find your identity in that stuff. And that's one of the big challenges we have in today. People even challenging and working hard to find out what their identity is. Very, very important. So we're not true to ourselves. We deny our God-given gifts. And then there's this whole imposter syndrome. So let's get more to the, the solution side and the benefit side of things. On the benefit side, what happens when we remove the mask? Well, we reveal our true self. Nothing to be scared of, by the way. Uh, a phrase that I've used many, many times for years is just being myself is good enough to be great. Just being myself is good enough to be great. You know, all of us are authentic selves. People, we love when people are just who they are. You know, not like the person who goes, I don't care what anybody thinks. Not, that's, that's childish rebellion. I'm talking about people who are very comfortable in their own skin. Other people enjoy that. We all enjoy that. And so we reveal our, our true self, okay? Now, the deal is that takes a bit of courage to be your authentic self. And the, the bottom line is, you know, the, the true self, it takes courage to be yourself. Warts and all, difficulties and all, imperfections and all. Oscar Wilde, great Irish playwright said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. And it's hard, and in the world we live in today, which by the way, we've seen political correctness now get weaponized and we hear cancer culture and all these different things. Just conformity is at the all time highest level of what you say and now even trying to control what you think. 
The fact of the matter is, it's telling us to be like everyone else. Oh, you can't say that, Brian. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I, I've never, I don't have an ounce of motivation in my life to hurt another soul in this world. I have a mission to impact and improve the lives of people. And I have an entire life dedicated to that. I, I married a person of a different race and culture. We have six mixed race kids. We have all of our charitable foundations and giving and da 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 And with that said, I will say things that will offend people. It's not my intention. And I'm going to do it again in the future. And the reason being is my, when I wake up in the morning, my goal is not to try not to offend people. My goal is to actually help people. And sometimes to help people, you have to say some challenging things. Challenging things. Again, I, I was a QA and a here recently. I did a live broadcast and somebody said, hey, you know, I've heard this and I've heard that and I just haven't done anything with it. Okay, I understand. But understand, I may not be your cup of tea because I'm only interested in people who are doing things. When I would go speak to 5,000 people in an auditorium, I knew that 20% of the people were going to get in coaching or were in coaching who were going to apply the content. And the other 80% went, weren't going to do anything. And it doesn't mean I don't love them. It doesn't mean I didn't give them my all. But I knew full well there's people who do and there's people who don't. And so what happens is the true self is people who believe enough in themselves to say, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be a poor imitation of someone else. I'm going to be the best version of myself. Here's my first challenging question for you today. Are you right now the best version of yourself? Are you pursuing the best version of yourself? Not have you arrived. There is no destination. We're all going into the pine box or up the chimney. Okay, that's the deal. The fact of the matter is where are you in your journey right now? I know where I'm at. I'm 54 years of age and I'm looking at my life. I'm looking at myself and I'm challenging myself to have the courage to be the very best that I can. And that's where I'm on the journey. And if you're up for that, come along with me. Sting, the great musician said, be yourself no matter what they say. See, I mean, uh, and Sting, that quotes from the 1990s. That was before social media. You know, and so now all that stuff has gone from scrawling it on the bathroom walls or reading a headline or a little critique in a newspaper or magazine to now it's everywhere and it's viral and this and that and the other and whatever else. Dr. Seuss from right here in La Jolla, California said, you were born to stand out, not to fit in. Be yourself. The next thing about removing the mask is we get to live up to our potential. I just love the word potential. I love the word potential. It gives us hope. It allows us to embrace our gifts, our strengths, and our abilities. Uh, you know, we, it brings out all of who we are and what we do. And uh, we get to shine a light to other people. You know, it's such a fantastic thing. You know, for me, and as I've asked more and more people about what the good life means to them, more and more people talk about serving others, helping others, you know, blessing somebody else. It is the good stuff, being of service to others. Now. The thing for me is, in order to serve others, I have to be at my best. To serve the highest number of people I can, I have to be at my best. And I've sometimes done a poor job at that. Uh, and so that's what happens is it ends up being a greater contrast between my true self and, and the false self. The mask comes on. The mask comes on when I'm not taking care of myself. The mask comes on. Oh no, I'm serving and helping, but I'm, man, I, I'm limping in this other area of my life. So we get to live up to our potential. Leo Pascaglia said, your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift back to God. One again, one of my favorite quotes. Jim Carrey said, your need for acceptance can make you invisible in this world. Don't let anything stand in the way of the light that shines through this form. Risk being seen in all your glory. The fact of the matter is, you know, I remember Brother O'Donoghue in, uh, let's see, it would have been St. Mary's, I'd have been in the fifth grade. And he came in with his guitar one of the Christian brother teachers, and he sang this little song. And it was this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I remember here's a bunch of scruffy little Dublin urchins in this class. And we're in here and the priest comes in and we're giving him a hard time. And the next thing, he takes out the guitar. and we, His nickname, everyone in the school at home had a nickname for everything. His nickname was Handlebars because he had big ears that stuck out. And we were brazen little kids. We go, hey, Handlebars, how are you doing? And he comes in, he starts strumming the guitar. He was completely, completely comfortable in his own skin. 
and he disarmed us in just a couple of moments. All these snot-nosed little paddies taking shots at him, whips out the guitar, starts singing this song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to say this. I watched it. I participated in it. He took us over. And within about three or four minutes, he had the whole lot of us singing it. Why? Because people would rather be around the light than the dark. People would rather be around something positive than something negative. We all want that. Because it's more connected to our authentic, true self. Not our false self. Not the one that's played up the game we play. So we got to remove the mask. It's good stuff. And, and ultimately, uh, not only do we reveal ourselves, we live to our potential, but we remember who we really are. You know, faking it is exhausting and pointless. Um, you know, and I've told this story before where, you know, the young person says, I, I, I'm just so concerned what everybody thinks. And then the middle-aged person says, ah, I don't care what anybody thinks. And then the old guy says, you know, nobody was thinking about me all along. The fact of the matter is, faking it is exhausting. Ralph Waldo Emerson, probably one of the most people I quote the most in these uh, broadcasts, says, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest achievement. That was 140 years ago he said that. To be yourself in a world that's constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest achievement. So if it was true 140 years ago, how much more today when everything is pushing us towards conformity of thought, conformity of behavior, conformity of speech, conformity of images, conformity of pictures we take and the vacations we have and everything's just conforming, conforming, conforming. And guess what's happening? More and more anxiety because less and less of us are being true to ourselves. Okay? Lao Tzu said, care about what other people think and you will always be their prisoner. Oh my goodness. Now we're, now we're going back a ways. Now, now we're really going back. And here's what we find. The human condition really hasn't changed much. Famous comedian Fanny Bryce said, let the world know you as you are, not as you think you should be, because sooner or later, if you are posing, you will forget the pose, and then where are you? And there's a lot of posing going on in the world today. We all know that, okay? So we don't want to be doing that. So we've covered behind the mask. And what happens when we're not true to ourselves? How we deny our God-given gifts and abilities and how we develop this imposter syndrome. We talked about removing the mask, that we reveal our true self, we live up to our potential, and we remember who we really are. And now I want to kind of finish this whole thing off by really encouraging and championing you to be yourself. The first dynamic of that is being authentic. You know, it takes strength to let that mask fall, but it ultimately brings peace. Carl Jung said, who looks outside dreams who looks inside awakes. A wonderful anonymous quote, my favorite author, is do yourself a favor, don't hide your magic. And Bruce Lee said, always be yourself, express yourself, have faith in yourself, do not go out and look for a successful personality and duplicate it. And I really think that's what this is about. It That authenticity is a quiet authenticity. It's just a knowing. Like who am I actually? And I will say this, sometimes it takes some heartache to get there. Sometimes you have to get broken to get there. Like, who am I actually? Who, who am I? Who have I been since I was a kid? And sometimes how we've gotten away from that. How we've gotten away from that. And I know for myself, it's been a series of uh, resetting and rediscovering over the years where I just got away from who I was as a kid and the ambition and the hope and the enthusiasm that's been there. And then you, you get into life and you get some disappointments and people let you down and circumstances happen and tough things happen in life and there's pain and loss and all kinds of stuff. And boom, how do you keep getting back up on the horse? Keep getting back up on the horse. And then all of a sudden you, you don't move away from it. You, you kind of pursue in your life and life is busy. You know, I've, I've had a busy life for the past 25 years, traveling, six kids, a big company, being all over the world. And it's just easy to drift. And we got to constantly reconnect and reconnect. And it's success. You know, they say a rocket on its way to the moon is off course 99% of the time because it's constantly adjusting and readjusting and readjusting and readjusting. From the outside looking in, it's like that rocket is just going on a straight line to the moon. Like nothing's ever off. And that's how it is with people's lives. We look at them, oh, that, they've never put a foot wrong. They have, you know, people say to me in Beverly all the time, 31 years of marriage, you guys have never had a bad day and everything's perfect and you got six wonderful kids and your business isn't real. Oh, do you want the whole story? 
Do you want the whole story? How much work it's been? How many difficulties we've gone through? How many businesses went up and down and in and out? How there was tons of money and then no money and all that type of good stuff. But to the outside eye, nothing ever happened. And what happens is we all get a little beat up with life. We all get, that, that's just the nature of it. You know, and uh, when Churchill said success is going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm, no question, that's what life is. And so that dynamic of being yourself after you've had all of these difficult experiences, that's really where it's at. To really get to the core. Who are you? What are you? And be that. Be that. And I'm talking about in your character, not in, in what you identify with, in your character, who you are as a person. Remember your very best gifts. Remember the things you've done where you've achieved. Remember how you've helped people out. Remember how you kept your head when other people lost theirs. Remember those things where in yourself you knew you had done the right thing for the right reasons in the right way. The next thing about being yourself is uh, define your goals, your beliefs, and your values. Um, Roy Disney, you know, very popular in Ireland. He was the Disney brother that made the Disney Corporation go. Had a big home in Ireland. It was famous for going to Cork and sailing around the south of Ireland. And he said, when your values are clear, your decisions are easy. Now, I've lived by that for years. I heard that quote from Lou Tice years ago at a seminar. And uh, when your values are clear, your decisions are easy. I'm very, very helpful for my family and my company making decisions because my values are crystal clear to me. So it, it becomes easy. It becomes easy. Oh, no, we could make money with this and this and this. And there's these different compromises. This is a bit shaky. No, it's not. I don't mess with shaky. I don't, no, nothing to do with it. No, no. Values are clear. Decisions are easy. Uh, I have certain principles about who I do business with, how I do business, all these kinds of decisions. Boom. This is, makes, it, makes it real clear. Makes it real clear. Les Brown said, if you set goals and go after them with all the determination you can muster, your gifts will take you places that will amaze you. Aristotle says, at the intersection where your gifts, talents, and abilities meet a human need, therein you will discover your purpose, no doubt. And then Stephen Covey talked about peace of mind. That happens when your life is in harmony with your true principles and values in no other way. What do I believe and why do I believe it? And what am I not willing to compromise on? Those are big things. The last thing I want to encourage you with is uh, be perfectly imperfect. You know, Mary Poppins used to say, I'm practically perfect in every way. That's why she was a fictional character. It's interesting that the lady who wrote Mary Poppins was, uh, you know, Google that lady and you'll find how imperfect a character that last was. But the fact of the matter is we're all perfectly imperfect. Uh, my friend Bob Bodine says, we're all a cup short. That's why we need each other. That's why it's okay to get coaching and you need help. I have a trainer for working out. And that's why if you're struggling psychologically, go get a psychological coach, you know, to help you. Uh, we all need help. We all need community and connection and interaction and fellowship. You know, be perfectly imperfect. Our imperfections make us human. They make us unique and they make us relatable. The fact of the matter is when we struggle and have difficulties, it's sharing those difficulties, overcoming those difficulties. That's what's inspirational to other people. Be honest about imperfections and relationships will deepen, become more meaningful and become more supportive. Uh, in his five dysfunctions of a team, my good friend Pat Lencioni figured that if you can get a team to actually share what their struggles are and what they actually have difficulty with and where they failed, that's when true connection as a team happens, as opposed to, I'm great at this, why aren't you? And then as we go through this dynamic, we have to understand that we are imperfect and that we're on the journey to get better. If we have that empathy for ourselves, we can have compassion for others. One of the things that concerns me in our culture today is how judgmental a culture we've become. Everything is judged on 140 characters or the appearance of what somebody said or somebody heard or who someone might be affiliated with. And there's instantaneous judgment and it's harsh. When you have judgment, there's a lack of empathy. When you have a lack of empathy, there's a lack of compassion. And I believe as a person, one of the, I'm, my mask is off when I'm connected, when I have empathy for myself and my own shortcomings, which then leads to compassion for others. And I will say this as a person, the struggles I've gone through, the difficulties in my life 
have given me uh, a sense of empathy. And out of that empathy has come compassion. When I came to America, I'll be candid with you, I was young, I was an athlete, I was in the best shape of my life, and I came over, I had the whole world in front of me, and I got in this serious motorcycle accident. And it was devastating. Okay, in and out of hospital for two years, and you know, it was, it was not a good scene. Not a good scene at all. But I'll say this, I don't know all the reasons that that happened. In fact, I don't know most of them. But I can tell you one of them is out of that came an empathy for people who were struggling and people who were hurt that I never had before. I'll be candid with you. I was kind of ignorant and dismissive of people who were struggling. I was 19. I hadn't had a major setback in my life. Everything had gone well for me. And this was the first major one. And I can tell you that that empathy. So when, when people are struggling financially, what happened to me that changed my whole life as a kid that, that's where that empathy came from. When I see people struggling in their business, when I see people struggling in their marriage, it's the reason why this show exists, is out of a sense of empathy for myself and that produced a compassion for others. So these difficulties and challenges and sometimes these trials and tragedies we go through in our life, if we'll persevere and fight the good fight and keep our head up, and, and not Pollyanna-ish, you know, we're going to affirm this stuff away and sit under the crystals in, you know, Sedona and everything's going to go away. No, no, not that stuff. The real stuff where you fight, bite, scratch and claw for the very best sense of your true self to come through this. You become armed now, not only with your true self, but with empathy and compassion. It makes you very, very powerful indeed. Well, as I've shared this today, I hope this has been helpful for you. I hope you understand we all wear a mask. Uh, we're all better when we remove the mask. We're all better when we are true to ourselves. And when we do that, we will impact other people. We will help other people. Uh, and it'll ultimately be a transformative change. So being perfectly imperfect is perfect for you and me. Daphne Rose King, a famous psychologist, says, be sure it's your real self that's shown because it's your real self that needs to be loved how to love and be loved. That's yeah, kind of the essence of life. One of the pastors at Hope City Church in Indianapolis said this, masks make shallow what God has intended to be deep. Everything in our lives gets cheated when we choose to hide behind our masks. So let's not do it. Let's not cheat ourselves and others. Let's be the very best versions of ourselves. I hope to help you on this journey because I'm trying to be the very best version of myself. I'm excited in the future. I'm excited for the future episodes and direction of this show and where we're going and where we intend to take this audience. And I hope you come on the journey with me. I hope you're one of the 20% that won't just listen and be entertained, but that you'll do, take action, and do what needs to be done to become the very best version of yourself. Take the mask off, live an authentic life, be a light and shine it on other people's lives. You'll be a blessing to so many. Well, it's been a blessing to be with you today. And I'm going to finish today's broadcast the way I have many times with somebody who wouldn't know a mask if she met it. It's the most authentic person I've ever met in my life who's very comfortable in her own skin and a constant source of motivation and inspiration. And it's my mother, Therese. Uh, over to you, Therese. Send us off today with a little Irish blessing. Lord knows we all could use it. May the road rise up to meet you. And may the wind always be at your back. May the rain fall soft upon your fields and the sun shine warm upon your face. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. See you next time.